Okay, I think we're going to get rolling. Melissa and I have a lot of content to cover, so we're just going to start right on time. Uh, and let's start with a replay of my new favorite video, which is showcasing all the beautiful and branded SharePoint sites, uh, like the ones we'll be talking about today. So hopefully that was a nice little piece of inspiration. Um, beautiful work by the team. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Denise Trebona. I am the design manager for the SharePoint team, where I lead an incredible uh, team of designers whose uh, great work you're going to see a lot of today. And my name is Melissa Torres, and I'm a program manager in the SharePoint Experiences team. And welcome to designing your, uh, your organization's intranet. So if you haven't already, we want this year to be the year you start on your journey to modernize your intranet. And intranet architecture is a vital piece of that. Denise and I will be showcasing four of the tools you should be using to build out a great intranet architecture, starting with branding, an integral part of overall site design and development that helps establish your organization's identity. Announced yesterday, home sites. And the personalized landing experience for your organization. Hubs, the ability to organize communication and collaboration sites together into departments, divisions, regions, what best fits your organization. And last but not least, site scripts and site designs, which automate provisioning new and existing sites with your own custom configurations. So the goal of this session is to kind of walk through how you can kind of the best practices for leveraging all of these tools to build a great and intelligent intranet. Now, before we get started, we wanted to highlight a look at some look of some beautiful modern SharePoint sites just to show you the stuff of stuff you can build. And most excitingly is that everything you're seeing here is built with out of the box pages, web parts, and branding capabilities. And as you can see, it not only applies to you know, specific communication sites, but it also applies to things like team sites and hub sites and home sites as well. So with that, let's go into the first piece, which is branding. All right, yeah, so I'm going to talk about um, branding and start with the foundational pieces of branding and how we think about brand in SharePoint. So when um, we set about to modernize SharePoint and rework uh, how branding and theming works, we did a, an extensive amount of customer research. And what customers told us about the core elements of branding uh, are that logos are very important, probably the most overt signal of branding, but also wayfinding for people using your intranet. Navigation, uh, just the way you structure your content and get around. Uh, theming, usually talked about as both font and color, and you can see as I bring color to this wireframe, it really starts to liven things up. And then finally, content structure, uh, which refers to you know, particular pieces of content and the way they're displayed in the page. So all of these elements are extensible and supported by site designs, and we're going to talk about uh, each of these things today in the course of this presentation. But before I jump into those, the other piece I wanted to highlight is our branding pillars. Um, so this is also really driven by what's important to our customers. And we got feedback from our customers that, um, of course, professional is important uh, for everybody working in a large organization, small organization, any kind of enterprise. Um, 
people really care about uh, being modern, clean, and organized, being able to showcase that enterprise content, and also reflecting industry or vertical. A uh, gaming company is gonna wanna have a very different look than a healthcare company, and we needed to make sure that SharePoint can support that. Uh, second, on Rails, we got lots of feedback from admins and branding teams about how important it is to be consistent and coherent with brand applied across the company and also working at various scopes. So working at that um, high level scope of something like your homepage, but also reflecting divisions or um, functions like HR and, and lots of different brands going on at various scopes within a company. And then um, finally, making sure that their options could be curated for employees and employees had the right choices uh, at the right place and time. And we'll talk a lot more about that later in the presentation. Next, efficient and smart. Um, being really efficient, which we'll show today, uh, includes providing the right branding options re just during site provisioning so end users don't even have to think about it. And uh, the smart piece is this will apply to all your modern sites and be mobile ready without any extra work from you. We take care of that part. Finally, I wanna touch on accessible. So we think it's important um, that uh, all your content is accessible to everyone in your organization. And we have great tools and guidelines uh, for, for how you can make your custom themes accessible, like our out-of-the-box themes are accessible. Okay, so let's jump in with uh, an overview of logos. So we support three tiers of logo display and navigation. And uh, up here in the left, you can see a tenant or organization logo. This is in the Office 365 suite header. And you can set the logo and you can also set the link for that logo. And many organizations will set that link to go to their uh, home site or company portal page. And I, I, you can also set the background color for that bar as well. And I just want to strongly encourage people to do this. I find that a lot of people don't even know this exists. Uh, and so it's a great way to make your company portal accessible from anywhere else in your intranet is to go ahead and set that up. Um, I also want to point out we've had customer feedback about that particular graphic not being crisp. And so um, the Office 365 team actually this week is releasing an update. So you have ways to get a really crisp and great looking logo in there. Second, the hub logo and navigation, which you can see highlighted, has another logo graphic and a link back to the hub home. Uh, and you can also control the background color on that. And finally, the site logo. You have a logo graphic that goes to home. And also, if you have a group connected team site, that name uh, of your site is gonna also feature your group card, which allows you to easily jump around to other Office 365 workloads. Okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit about theming and then I'm gonna get into demoing um, all of this. So uh, overview of theming capabilities. When I talk about theming, I'm talking about one main color and one accent color uh, used together. And we'll provide different accent colors to go with each main color in the out of the box themes. Uh, we have six light and two dark themes out of the box and those can be customized from, uh, from the starting point there. So with that, I will jump into the demo. Oh, thanks. Get the mission control over here. Okay, so I'm starting out with the global marketing site. And this is a nice looking site with great content in it, but it's not particularly branded. So we're gonna go take care of that. I'm gonna go up here to the gear in the Office 365 suite header, and I'm gonna click on change the look. And this is where a lot of the options we're gonna see for branding and theming will take place. So I'm gonna jump in here and start by exploring theme and go down here to the SharePoint themes that you see. And I can click around to any of the themes in here and you'll see things changing, color changing live on the page. Uh, and let me go into this orange theme, and you'll see that I have the ability to customize. Uh, and I can go in here, and from here I can drive around any of the main colors. And you'll see the accent colors change as I uh, pick a different main color. And we've applied some color theory here to kind of make sure that these themes, none of these themes can ever uh, look bad or look mismatched. And we've used complementary colors and analogous colors, colors that match on the color wheel, as well as always provided a neutral. And then the same color is your main color in case you want to go monochromatic. 
In this case, I'm going to stick with the settings for the orange theme and go back. And um, that's looking pretty nice, but I think it could still use a little bit more color. So I'm going to go into the header. And I've got these background options where I can put a little bit of color uh, into the uh, header background. And you'll see it also appearing in the hub. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead, for our purposes, and pick this strong background. And I think that looks nice. So I'm going to save that, get out to change the look and settings all together. And then as I go down the page, this is overall very nice looking page, but rather white in background. And I think it could use a little something to break it up. So I'm going to put the page in edit mode using the edit button right here. Scroll back down to that section and just select this section, choose edit. And you'll see I have the same section background options that I showed earlier. And one thing I want to point out is that as I choose this strong background, what you'll notice is that the color changes here on the content and the buttons to be automatically accessible and legible. So that's something that we've taken care of for you with the theming. All right, so that looks pretty nice. I've added a lot of color to the page, giving it a lot more pop. But I think there's still more to do. I'm going to go back to the header to work on a little bit more branding and change the look. I'm going to go back into my header and change my logo. Now here I've got a new logo that is wider, not square, and also transparent which is something we've also heard uh, a lot about from customers. And I think this, the, these look really nice together, pop really well, the blue and the orange. Uh, but one last thing I'd like to do is that I think the header's a little tall, um, especially since this is part of a hub and we've got the hub nav up here now. So I'm going to take advantage of this new compact layout, which I think works well if you have a short site name and you've got short um, navigation options. You can pull these all onto the same line in your site and start to really um, shr shrink up the header space and get back some of that vertical, comp uh, vertical content space. So let me jump back to recap the demo. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and just talk a little bit about what we just saw. Um, so we did see the out-of-the-box themes. I want to note that um, with just with the out-of-the-box themes, there are 120 uh, possible color combinations to play with in there. Um, we've got the standard and now the compact header in terms of header layouts and the ability to put a, a larger horizontal uh, logo in there with transparency and great use of background color. And also, I wanted the last thing I wanted to point out with regard to additional vertical canvas. Um, so I talked about the compact header. And we're working on a shy header, which will allow all of the header elements to scroll away. So when people start reading as they move down the page, they've got even more room for our content consumption, which is another big piece of feedback we've heard from people that they've been wanting. OK. So from there, um, I do want to touch a little bit more in the section background with some best practices. Um, this is a relatively uh, new capability we've introduced. And in terms of how to use it, I would really recommend um, using it to highlight something. So set off something important, or you can use it to organize content in your page, or you can use it to, to break up the page. I don't recommend using it for sort of trying to get an overall change in the background color of your entire page. I would strongly recommend using custom theming for that, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. Uh, I also wanted to point out the Microsoft UI fabric uh, framework is um, really important in terms of uh, all the theming information is there included. When you make your web parts using Fabric, you will, you will get all the right info for um, theming as part of that and making your parts look great against section backgrounds and also keeping them accessible. OK. So from there, I'm going to jump into custom theming and get into excuse me, how you can get your organization's colors in the mix here. And we'll do that um, th through the Change the Look panel, so site owners can use these options. But then we'll also look at how uh, these can be applied via a theme. Uh, theming can be applied via a site design. This is some new capabilities that we have. 
So I'm gonna switch back over to our demo. And I'm gonna jump over here to my next site. And so you can see I've got this Contoso workshop site all set up with a, a nice header, lots of color. Um, but I need to take a look at, I need to take a look at um, different themes here. And I'm gonna be able to go into theme under change the look and see the set of company themes. And so these are themes that my company's provided, Contoso Electronics. And as I click around, it's as easy as just selecting the right theme and I'm good to go. And I know these are provided by my organization and approved for me to use. You'll note one thing here that there's no ability to customize this theme. So an admin and the branding team have worked together to set up this theme and it's not open for end users to change. And that's part of the level of um, curation that we really heard from customers that they wanted to be able to have with regards to theming. Okay, so that was easy. And next I'm gonna jump over to, hmm. hang on one second. Uh, I'm gonna jump up to SharePoint Home. Let's close, change the look. Uh, I'm gonna go create a new site. I'm gonna choose communication site. And over here under choose a design, you can see there are additional options um, besides the ones that SharePoint provides out of the box. So again, these have been provided by my organization. And you can see that there's global marketing branding. I'm gonna choose that option. I'm gonna give the site a name, digital assets and finish creating this site. And the site script is running right now, the site design, so let's take a look and, oh, refresh the site to see the changes. Oh, I, you wanna open the panel? Yeah, let's open the panel. So, gear? That was so design. fast. It was fast, yeah. It was so fast. <laughs> the point I usually click from went away. Um, but this is an additional way, a good learning for everybody, to go see what site design has run on this site. So as Melissa pointed out, you can go to the gear and just go down to site designs. And so what happened on this site, um, we applied a theme, Kados Electronics, updated the branding, updated the site logo. Um, we took away many navigation links and added many navigation links. So let's take a look at what that looks like. View the updated site. And you can see there's a big theme change, very visible there. And you can also see the logo's been added for me and the navigation's been changed. So no longer do you see documents, uh, page contents there by default, but instead you see guidelines and you can see that uh, there was a mega menu provisioned as part of this as well. So that makes it super easy for your end users just to pick the right site at the time of provisioning and get everything they need, um, you know, without any work at all on their part. I'm more very excited about that as a new capability. And so um, just to recap, this is the set of things um, in terms of branding options that you can apply as part of site provisioning. Uh, the logo, the header layout can be chosen. Uh, the background color and being able to add and remove navigation links. Oh, you can also turn on the site footer and add links in the site footer. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. Okay, so the next piece. Oh, I also wanted to mention about accessible custom themes and creating uh, custom themes. So we have a tool to help you generate the custom theme values. Uh, you can put in key values from your organization in our theme generator and get back the code that you need for the custom theme, the values that you need for the custom theme. Um, but we have an update coming soon to the theme generator, which I'm really excited about, um, just in terms of, uh, we got a lot of feedback about the existing theme generator, and one of the issues is that you can't really see what your, what your values are gonna turn out like. And so you can see up here, we've provided some samples, so you'll see how your colors turn out against some of the, um, core UI controls and components, um, what the text will look like. And then down at the bottom, you'll see the accessibility checker. And this will let you know right here in the theme generator, if you've got some values that are conflicting with each other and not providing high enough contrast. 
And so this will tell you exactly you know, which values you might need to go tweak, and you can check it again until you get your contrast ratios um, where they need to be so that you're uh, accessible. So we're very excited about this. This is something um, we've had customers asking for, and we think it's really important in terms of making all your content accessible to all employees. Um, and also very frequently, um, we know people are uh, being asked to be compliant in their organizations and in line with standards. And so we're helping with that as well. Next, we'll talk a little bit about navigation. Um, so this is the foundation of navigation. You've got your team site navigation in the left nav and your comm site navigation in the top nav. Uh, your hub navigation up at the top, just underneath the Office 365 suite header, which connects all your associated sites. And then styling options for both of those um, are cascading uh, menus, either if you're going horizontal or on the left nav. But what we've recently introduced, and was also a very big customer demand, was mega menus to give really more navigation density, um, better grouping, better hierarchy for navigational items. And that's currently available in the um, horizontal communication site nav and the hub nav as well. So let's take a quick look at that. Thanks, Melissa. Um, over here on the Contoso Give site. So this is as easy as you can see up here under benefits. I've got the mega menu working. And down here, I've got that cascading menu that I talked about. So you can have both those styles uh, existing on the site. And then also here, I want to point out um, the site footer. So we've added a simple site footer here, so you have room for a graphic of your choosing at the bottom, and also some uh, simple links to whatever you, know, you find to be necessary in this site. This is working at the site level with the footer at the moment. So let me jump back to the PowerPoint. So just to quickly recap, um, we've got the cascading and mega menu navigation and that consistent site footer. Uh, at the end of the page. And I also wanted to mention the theme changes apply to the header and the footer both, which you probably saw on that site. And if you've got um, the theme working at the hub level and all the associated sites will also inherit that theme, which is another great way to consistently uh, and easily apply theme uh, across divisions or um, functions or other groups within your company. So I just showed the simple footer, um, but in the works we have an extended footer um, where you'll see, uh, some people also refer to this as the fat footer for some reason, uh, really a tall, really super tall footer. And we'll also have the ability to bring the two of those together and stack them, so you have really a lot of options in that regard. And then um, I also wanted to point out, we also have an existing, currently available SharePoint framework solution that's available on our Patterns and Practices PNP site. And this is a nice option. Um, the first two columns of links here are set by the organization, but that third column of links is end user customizable. So your end users, if they have um, particular tools or you know, links that they need to do their job, they can actually customize those. Uh, and make it useful for them, you know, personally useful for themselves. So that's a nice uh, extension I wanted to point out. All right, so let's get into content structure, our fourth element in branding. So with content structure, as I mentioned earlier, this can refer to the actual content on the page or um, also the way this content is laid out and arranged uh, on the page. And we've had companies say, like, the way that we, you know, the way that I do this in my company is a specific piece of my information architecture and how I work. And so um, I'm gonna jump in and demo a couple of uh, new features uh, in the works and rolling out, just rolled out now with regard to some uh, advancements we have here. I'm gonna start with the Contoso news site and choose to make a new page. And you'll see that I have some new options for pages. I have templates here. Uh, this is a, a sort of a modern use of the word template, not in the classic SharePoint template sense, uh, but page templates, and this is working at the site level. And so we've provided some options out of the box. And then you'll also see saved on this site are some pages that um, my coworkers have put here 
and I'm able to reuse. Uh, I get a live preview of each of these so I can see if you know, this is the page I'm looking for or what I'm after, but this is a really efficient way if you have pages that um, you do on a regular basis, something like a trip report, something like a monthly status report. This is a great, great way to make that more efficient um, and then also to create some consistency for your content structure. So let me choose actually the basic text page create this page. And the next thing I'm going to do is change the picture in this page. And I've got a bunch of recent images of here, of course, and web search, which has existed previously. But here, I've got something new. I've got images that have been provided by my organization. So these are brand assets. They're put there for, you know, by my communications team or my brand team. And I can go in and choose from an entire set of company-approved photography that's available for my use so I don't have to just go scrape random things off the internet that may or you know, may not be OK from a licensing standpoint. So I'm going to go into the folder here for aerials. And um, I think pick the aerial travel blue. And you'll see it was as easy as that to go get um, approved photography and get that into my page. Let me jump back and recap that. Um, so the new page design gallery um, is 100% released as of last week. So you know, everybody using um, modern sites should have this uh, available to them now. I would urge you to go back and play with it. It's really fun to be able to make these pages and then save them and reuse them. Uh, and organizational assets, really your brand library, you can put um, Logos, photos, videos, illustrations, you know, anything that's a brand approved asset in there and organize that the same way you would uh, as a document library with subfolders and structures, etc. Also, I want to mention that's linked to the source. So um, you have a good way to make updates. So for example, if your logo changes, uh, you can automatically get that updated in all the places it's used. It's really a fantastic thing from a brand standpoint. Uh, and that's one more that's um, in progress right now and uh, actually coming soon. All right, so I'm going to switch gears. Uh, this is still content structure, but I'm going to level up to some information architecture and talk about home sites and the SharePoint start page. And you know, we introduced home sites this week, and I think there's um, probably along with that, people start to wonder, well, how do all of these sites, site types relate together? So Melissa and I are both going to um, talk about that here in this presentation. So starting out with. Um, the SharePoint start page. This is a landing page for SharePoint as an app in Office 365. All the Office 365 apps actually have these pages. Um, and our page is very focused on uh, personal wayfinding around the internet. So um, recent documents, news that's relevant to you, and um, sites definitely uh, are a big component of that. We also have introduced SharePoint home sites, and that's that top level branded site. And this would be a site that uh, you as an organization create. It's heavily curated with all the important co uh, company content, news, uh, employee engagement, uh, and you know, uh, Yammer conversation stream, a bunch of different um, fantastic web parts that we can bring together. And I'll show that in, a, in the demo in a second. So. Um, Two way, important ways I want to point out these relate to each other. So here uh, we have the red arrow going sideways, um, and that's pointing out a shared navigation. And so literally these two pages, um, if somebody's in that very personal view of the intranet, they're still able to get to all of the same important company links uh, that you have available from the home site. And I also want to talk for a second about the red rectangle here on the page, which is a new vertical column section. And we can actually create a connection between these two by featuring some of the SharePoint start content there. Um, that's optional, something that uh, if you want to do that in your organization. So let me jump into a demo, which I think I can illustrate um, some of this in more detail. So here I'm actually starting out on the home site, the landing. And you can see I've got um, the new universal M365 search box up here. This will be able to search across my entire tenant at the home site level. You can see I've got um, the mega menu nav for my important company resources, like we've just been talking about. Important company news, we've got a great display for 
uh, a news carousel, and we've also got more news down the page displayed with just a little bit more density. And we can highlight news from certain important sites like Leadership Connection or the Contoso News site. And below that, we've got some video, uh, feature video here from Stream. And then we move into social with Twitter, keeping an eye on external social, and Yammer, keeping an eye on internal social. And over on the right, we've got a selection of web parts that my company thinks is important, countdowns for important product launches, uh, weather, our stock price, uh, shared time zones with partners. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a little bit of personally relevant information pulled in my recent documents and my frequent sites pulled in from SharePoint Start. So let's take a quick look at SharePoint Start. Boy, these two overdue tasks from Planner really <laughs> keep popping up. So here you can see I've got news from my sites, and it's featuring a little bit of the company curated news, but I've also got um, news from sites that I would call local, so personal to me. These are sites uh, and teams that I work with every day and news from them, and that's how it's different from the com all the company curated news on the home site is we've done the work to make that personally relevant. Similarly with sites, you'll see frequent sites, followed sites, recent, and even suggested sites uh, to help me get back to the sites I use most often, as well as featured links from my company to make sure important res resources are easily available, but also recent and saved items. And that's the really person personally relevant view. And so I think, um, there's really a lot of uh, value in home sites, and there's a lot of value in being able to pull some of the personally relevant information from SharePoint Start over to the home site. Uh, we know from uh, talking with customers and doing research that when, um, when your home site includes personally relevant information, uh, there's a lot more engagement with employees, there's a lot more retention. And also when we include things like Stream and Yammer and really live and fresh content that employees really tend to engage with these sites uh, much more often. So with that, I think I'm gonna turn it over to Melissa to That's talk right. about hubs. Woohoo! So I'll switch here with you. So the next tool that we're gonna be talking about for building your uh, modern internet architecture is hubs, which is near and dear to my heart. Hubs really help you build a flexible, dynamic company intranet. They connect communication and collaboration sites together. They enhance discovery and engagement with content. And most importantly, they're flexible. So as changes happen, you know, or either your business goals change or your street team structures evolve, you can adapt to those changes. So I thought um, that I'd kick us off talking about hubs with an actual walkthrough of what a hub looks like. So let me jump around and do that. Okay, so here we are on the sales hub. And the first thing that I want you to notice, oh, I have one question, sorry, before we start. How many of you are using hubs? Yeah, that's awesome, thank you. Um, okay, so how do you know that a site is a hub? That's right, the cross-site navigation all the way at the top is your kind of first indication that you're on the, in the cool place, that you're in the hubs. Uh, and so here, for example, we have the, the cross-site navigation, which to Denise's point, um, supports uh, the mega menu. But I do want you to notice um, a couple things. Notice the theme and notice um, when I click here on operations, the smooth transition from one site to the other. And as you notice, there was no full page refresh. So when you're navigating across the sites in your hub, it really feels like it's just one family and you're just on one site as you kind of go through the experience. So um, we worked really hard to make that super smooth. Now going back to the sales hub, which by the way is easy to get to because it's always on either by the hub name or on the hub logo. So that also kind of connects so you can always go back. Now the next thing I want you to notice is search. So when we moved search to the top, we obviously kept the hub um, entity, um, the hub relationship there. So if I click over here over search, it's gonna again show me search results scoped to all the items within the hubs. So it's gonna show you news, files, and sites that are just, um, just scoped to items within the hub. Now, one of the key benefits of hubs is aggregated views, and we support four aggregations news, events, sites, and content like files through the use of a highlighted content web part. So I thought I'd give you a really quick run through of, what, of those four, starting with news. 
Now, you have news right here in the middle with the Hub News roll-up to really showcase the density of, you know, a lot of information being rolled up. And you immediately can see not only the article, but where it's coming from. Like, for example, this one's coming from retail and this one's coming from operations. But we've given you a lot of knobs and dials to control this. So if I click here, um, by default on a hub, it's set to all sites in the hub, but you can also pick selected sites. And what this lets you do is you can always kind of be like, no, I don't want to include items from retail. Um, but it also lets you add new sites. So for example, if I click here news, and actually it's already selected, but the point that I wanted to make is that it lets you pick news from other sources. And so what that lets you do is it's not just news from your hub, but you can imagine having multiple web parts, one that's pulling news from you know, your corporate news and the other one that's pulling from stuff on the, on the, on the hub itself or so many other configurations that you can, you can build. So it's kind of excitingly up to you. Now, I'm going to put it back in all sites in the hub for a second because the next thing I want to show you um, is brand new and it's filtering. And so now you have the capability to be able to filter your hub results. And so if I type in here Contoso and click apply, boom, all of a sudden, well, I should say bam, because that's what I normally say. <laughs> now all your results are immediately um, filtered to that. And it's not only um, title like items like this, but you can also do it by person, like by person who creates it. So a great example is you can imagine having two web parts on the page, one that's rolling up from, say, for example, the sales VP news post from him, and then, and then the other one web part that actually is like rolling up content from the rest of the hub. So it's really that powerfulness that now is at your tip. And the last but not least thing that I'll mention is we now also support audience targeting. Um, I'm sure you've heard about it in probably other sessions, so I won't go deep into it here. But um, the important thing is, even though you're on the hub, if you, there's specific news items that you want to make sure that are applied to only a specific set of people, um, the hub will, will be able to show that as well. And of course, um, really quickly, there's pinning as well. So that's news. As I scroll down this beautiful looking page, there's also the sites web part. So one question I get is, hey, what about all the sites that are related to the hub? You can see what those are through the sites web part by adding it to your, web, to your site. Um, and uh, by default, it also sets to all sites in the hub. But here's a quick tip for those of you. Um, you can click see all, and actually one thing I do on, on my hubs is uh, grab this link and put it in the hub navigation. And so if anybody wants to see what other sites are in the hub and you, have, you, know, you don't want to curate all of them in your hub nav, you can actually do it this way as well. Really quickly, here's events. As you can see, um, the events web part here is showing you that's coming from operations. So again, that roll up capability. And last but not least, this is highlighted, um, the highlighted content web part, again, set to all sites in the hub. But this time, we want to show what are the trending documents. So again, you have all this kind of rich capability. And now, there we go. <laughs> so to, to recap, linking related team and communication sites together really helps your organizations work more um, productively across any number of sites. Um, as, it, as I showed, it delivers cross-site navigation, consistent look and feel in, with theming, um, like uh, Denise mentioned earlier, search just scoped to sites, and a common IA through the use of site designs, which I'm going to be demoing in a few minutes. Now, one question that I get is, hey, what should be a hub? And we really think about um, major kind of usually these kind of three major hub types. Um, the first is organization. And a lot of the times you can be like, you know, for example, within Microsoft, we have a hub for, for SharePoint and a hub for devices or a hub for Xbox. The other one is by location. So you can think about it as a regional subsidiary. And last but not least, and the one we, you see us use mostly um, in our demos, um, functions like HR, finance, legal, and such. Now that I showed you what a hub looks like, um, I'm going to switch around and show you how you can create one. Now, long gone are the days of PowerShell. <laughs> you can now go to the modern admin center and create a hub from here. So for this case, I want to create a hub for my research, my R&D department. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this research communication sites available here. And now you can see here in the command bar for um, the modern admin center, there's the hub site option. I can click register. 
and I can click, I can add the name research. And very importantly, I can scope this hub immediately. So if you only want people in, within this research organization to see it, you can do that right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And in a couple of seconds, that's just gonna create the hub for me, which is great. Look at that, it's already done. And the way you can tell it's a hub is right here um, in parentheses, it'll tell you it's a hub site. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so before, if you wanted to join a hub, you'd have to go to the site to, in order to do that, or you could do it in PowerShell. But now we're making it super easy for admins to do this. So you can pick multiple sites, and then with the bulk edit option, you can click Hub Site Association, and now you'll see research that I literally just created seconds ago. Click Research, click Save, and in a couple of seconds, now you've joined all these sites to the hub. So again, really empowering admins to do it all in one place and super fast. Come on, this, this, this is exciting. Yay, thank you. <laughs> okay. So to recap, hubs are created by SharePoint admins and that, as you saw, you can create them from the admin center. Uh, I, want, I do want to. Uh, I do want to state that the reason why, because I get asked this question, we only let admins do it. It's really because they're the ones in the best position to really think about their overall internet architecture. Like I'm sure a lot of you are here for this session because it's called internet architecture, and so you're really in the right um, kind of frame of mind to know how you want to or, um, organize your 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 IA. Now, another thing I want to mention is our current, current limit for hubs is 100. Well, I'm excited to announce that we are increasing it very soon, and we are increasing it to 2,000. <laughs> Woohoo! So this gives admins way more flexibility to be able to kind of meet the needs of their organizations. And I know I've heard um, stories from some of you that are kind of like holding on to, you know, the hubs and being like, no, you don't get one. You're not good enough. Now you can hopefully ease up a little bit in that governance um, as we incre we're increasing that limit for you. Now, as I mentioned, um, hubs can be scoped uh, and kind of what I showed, and I recommend that you do that because you really kind of want to be able to let the people who are part of that hub just join their sites to the hub. And we also are working on an approvals process. So you can um, turn on approvals on the hub and that way every single time that a site joins a hub, you can approve it or reject it. Um, last but not least, uh, hub before you sub, hubs, <laughs> ah, you like that, right? <laughs> hub before you sub, um, hubs really is our new modern way for organizing your sites. And so um, we kind of say, hey, go with, go with us on this journey. And we're giving you the tools to be able to do that by being able to disable um, subsite creation. Okay. So after the home site announcement yesterday, some of you might be wondering about the relationship between home sites and hubs, right? Well, you came to the right session, because this is the IA session, so we're going to talk about this. So as Denise mentioned, um, home sites are your personal landing site for your organization. But the home site itself can leverage the hub superpowers. That's, uh, that's right, you, can, you should think about both home and hubs as superpowers that you can enable on your site. So in scenarios where, for example, you have a separate site for corporate news and a separate site for leadership, you can make your, hub a, your home site a hub and associate those sites to it. But that's just one way that you can do it. The other approach, which is also fine to create this kind of structure of an, of an IA, is to put those two sites, basically put those sites as destinations on your home site mega menu. So you're still kind of creating that IA, but in two, you have two different approaches to do this. Now, whether you decide to hubify your, hub, um, your home site or not, remember that you should be leveraging hubs really to organize sites by either department, division, region, organization, like I mentioned before. And you can create an IA between the home site and the hub by also kind of picking your top hubs or your major hubs and adding them to your, your, your um, home site mega menu, kind of letting users who go to the home site be able to, link, um, to, be able to jump um, between them. So to, oh, and then it's not only about hubs, you can also do it on other sites, like for example, in this case, planning and facilities. Okay. So now that I showed you that, let me show you a quick demo. 
So here is the home site um, that Denise was showing you. Actually, let me go and click here on Landing's home. Uh, but, so here is the home site Denise was showing you. Um, and you can see that um, it's a hub because why, why? Because the nav at the top, that's right. That's why I made you notice at the beginning. So the nav at the top now um, kind of tells you that it's a hub. And if I switch over to SharePoint to the My SharePoint pivot over here, you'll notice that the navigation stays as well. So here's kind of showing how you can combine these two superpowers together um, and leverage both awesome capabilities. So isn't that exciting? Come on. <laughs> So now we talked about hubs. Um, let's spend some time talking through the last tool for building an amazing intranet architecture, site scripts and site designs. Now, site designs enable you to apply a consistent set of actions or a configuration to sites when you're either on either existing sites or when you're creating them. And it really consists of two components. There are site scripts which you can think about as where the action takes place, which is just a set of actions, like create a list, create views for that list, add this to the nav, change your branding, like Denise showed. And then there's site designs, which you should think of, of, think of as a wrapper around the, site around the site scripts, because you can have uh, multiple site scripts in one site design. Uh, now, the site design is actually what gets applied. And like I mentioned, you can apply them on the, uh, when you're provisioning a new site from SP Home or as well as when you're doing hub association or on existing sites. So um, I'm going to show you a demo, but before I do that, um, this is what a site script looks like. It's a JSON file. And the demo that I'm going to show you next, here's the five things that this, this site script is going to do. First, it's going to create a list. It's going to create site columns for that list, including one that points to global taxonomy. It's going to add a link to that list onto your site navigation, so it's easy to find. Um, it's, we're going to change the branding, um, the, comp, the header layout to compact. And um, we're also going to add a security group to your, your visitors group. And last but not least, it's also going to trigger a flow to send me an email every single time a site joins the hub. So, I don't expect you all to remember all those five things, so let me, let me switch over and show it to you in, in action. So I'm back in the sales hub. Go ahead and click publish here. And on the hub, um, another thing that we want to make it super easy for you is to create sites that are already in the hub. So I'm going to click here on create site, and I'm going to click um, team site, and I'm going to call here sales campaign and get that created. And I didn't do anything else but just you know, pick to create a site and pick um, to create a team site. I could have also picked to create a communication site, by the way. Um, and now my site behind the scenes is going to get created. But um, pretty soon, you're going to see that bar show up, that view progress bar. And behind the scenes, this is what's happening. So the site's getting created and finished up. And I can actually start uploading files and working on my site. But behind the scenes, a site script, the site script that I mentioned before, is actually ex being executed to create all the things that I mentioned. So let's give that a couple seconds. Um, come on. Well, I was prepared, just in case that took long. Here's my backup. <laughs> but I'll check it. Oh, there it is. Um, so here, while you're, while you're working on your site, um, you can see here that here's all the things that I mentioned it was going to do. So it's going to create a list called sales campaign. It's going to add that to the site nav. It's going to update branding. It's going to do the, the security group, and it's going to trigger the flow. Um, and so if you want to see, oh, there it is. It finished. Perfect. I click view updated site. You notice here the, the, the header layout change. Here's the sales campaign. But before I click that, let me open site permissions. And you'll see here is the visitors group that I, I added. And if I click on sales campaign, here is the entire list with multiple views. Here's the all campaigns and the in progress review. And if I create, and if I look at here, product, you can see that this is actually connected um, to taxonomy. And so again, you get all that richness, including custom formatting to go around with it. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah. So immediate configuration. OK. So 
now that, um, now that we've seen site designs in action, um, I wanted to give a quick overview of how they work. So we have site scripts, like I mentioned, are the, where the action takes place, and their files are stored in a library. Site designs are in a list. Today, you create them using PowerShell, um, and they get applied, as I mentioned, um, through either Hub Association, through um, when you create a site. Um, you can also set them as default, so whenever a site gets created, it always applies a site design to it, and you can also hide out of the box ones. Um, and like I, sh like I showed, when a site is executing, you get a bar at the top that's letting you know that something's happening. Now that I showed you how what happens when it gets applied, you're probably wondering, how do I create it? So let me give you a demo of that. So I'm going to make this fast. I'm going to go ahead and open PowerShell. And here is uh, introducing something to make building site scripts way faster. So we are introducing this get SBO site script from web where you can specify a URL and you can list out the things you want to include. In this case, branding, the theme, regional settings, and even the lists. And if you run that command, it's going to go ahead and basically extract that site script from that. And then I'm going to go ahead and create that site script. I'm going to do this fast. I'm going to create that site design. And now if I go back to SharePoint, and by the way, I called it um, campaigns site design. I go here, and it's a team site. Here it is, the one that I literally just created seconds ago, and I'm going to call it drone sales. And guess what's going to happen? Same thing as I showed before. That site design that I pointed out is going to get applied on that new site, and we're going to get the yellow bar. There you go. And so it's going to tell me hey, here's the stuff that I had on that site, which was similar, actually, to the one that I had before. And so in one full swoop, boom! Making creation super fast, and you don't have to go through all the JSON. You can kind of do it um, fairly quickly. So earlier this year, we introduced the what we call the site scripts auto-generation with the with the get SPO um, site script from list, which will let you do it for lists. But pretty soon, we'll be releasing this option to do it at the site level. And these are the things we support today, but our goal is to continue to increase those. And by the way, if you're wondering about what's the updated list of what we support today via site scripts, here it is. In gold are the ones that are net new, like, for example, global taxonomy. Um, I want to address that we also now support adding links to the hub navigation. So if you want to create site scripts to make um, filling out your hub navigation faster, you can do that as well. Um, branding, which Denise showed off before with the custom branding. And we're also working on the ability for you to activate features via site script as well. So the last demo I'll show you um, is the idea that you can also set a default and hide out of the box. So in this case, if I click here on Create Site, this is a different tenant, and I click Communication. By default, communication sites come with Topic Showcase Blank. Um, and here I can show you that I've basically removed Blank and uh, Showcase from the list. So if you have you created your own site design and you don't want to use one of our out of box, you can show it. Uh, and um, for the interest of time, I won't run it, but I've also, in this, in this particular case, I've also set it up to be a default. So as soon as I create the site, you would also see the site design apply. Okay. So I know we went through a lot of content, but we just really wanted to recap kind of the best practices for your intranet. Um, we mentioned kind of creating a brand identity, using logos and header layout options to create that identity, use color to make really um, visually impacting sites, use the landing site for your organization, use home sites for that landing experience that not only connects the workplace with intelligence rich, but showcases news and um, to the right people. Organize your sites using hubs to create departments, regions, divisions, use that cross-site na navigation, consistent look and feel, and last but not least, use site scripts and site designs to drive consistency um, with your own custom configurations. 
Thank you. Okay, so we have a little bit of what I'll call bonus material. Uh, I got some questions actually as early as last uh, Ignite about, hey, we're hearing a lot about this Fluent thing. It's rolling out across Office. When will SharePoint be rolling out Fluent? So um, you might notice that we've taken our first step as part of rolling out Fluent. We have a branded icon update. Uh, and there's been a, a activity in uh, the social community about um, use of that new branded icon. And so I thought uh, for all my friends who've been asking, uh, quick do's and don'ts, which is basically don't do anything to it. Um, <laughs> Boy, it boils down to as easy as that. Um, and then uh, also the other big question I got is, well, what's the new color going to be? Like, what will, what will take the place of classic SharePoint blue? So it's teal. Um, and this is our teal color ramp. And you can see some sites here uh, that are showcasing what the new default teal color will look like. So if you provision a site uh, and it's just provisioned using a communication site using the default theme will uh, look a lot like this. And then finally, um, I also got questions about, well, when Fluent comes to my pages, like, what's that going to change? How's that going to impact the look and feel? Because, you know, I like things the, the certain way, the way they are. So will, there, will the changes be big, I guess, was the question. And so uh, what I'll point out here is the site in the back is the, is the existing look and feel. And the site here is a peek forward into applying fluent typography and fluent styling. And you can see overall the changes are subtle. Um, probably the biggest thing I'd say people notice is that the type gets a little bit bolder. Um, but we'll, I will highlight a couple other uh, elements, which is we've rounded the corners just slightly um, on our default elements. And uh, we've also changed some of the alignment of things in the page uh, and the type, as I previously mentioned. So I think. Um, from there, we will jump into the roadmap. Um, this is typically a slide people like to take lots of pictures of, so I'm not going to read this entire list to you, but I'll give everybody a second to um, take a snap. But you can see a lot of the things we talked about today are going to be available soon. Um, the new page templates is actually uh, already available. We're really excited about that. And, org assets coming soon. And also, most importantly, I think for many of you, the hub limit increased to 2,000, uh, which is super big news. And then as Melissa just showed, being able to extract a site to a site script, including multiple lists, the branding, and the nav, uh, and be able to use a lot and apply that elsewhere to another site um, are, are key items for us uh, coming soon that we want to make sure everybody knows this. So resources. Uh, next up, we have additional resources, and this will get you to um, a lot of the things Melissa and I were, were talking about today, uh, the theme generator, uh, how to design accessibly, uh, get started with Fabric, and some overviews around hub sites, site scripts, and site design. So we have a lot of good information. And this will all be also available um, when the deck is posted. And um, yeah, I think anything you want to add? No, I think um, there's a thank you slide. Uh, oh, that, that's not very, OK, no, it's getting better. OK. <laughs> oh. oh. And I, can, I guess it stopped. Uh, well, I was going to say thank you for coming. <laughs> um, and I guess also, finally, um, we did bring oh, um, right. some lookbooks. And so if you want to come by and grab one of those on your way out, or you have any questions, um, please let us know when we are right on time. Yeah. Thank you. It's been a great audience. <laughs>